Our next event or the session is the Kiko Naoroji Book Award Ceremony. May I invite on stage Dr. Mrs. Rosa Godrej, an art historian and chairperson of the Godrej Archive Council. Dr. Godrej is also the founder of the Subrosa Art Gallery, Mumbai. Dr. Godrej wears many hats, but most importantly, she has been an unflinching pillar of support to the Himalayan Club. Through the Firozsa Godrej Foundation, most of us know that Godrej has been a crusader for a better world with initiatives that benefit the environment, the endangered forest, wildlife, mangroves, and above all, our climate. I request Dr. Godrej to join us on the stage, please. May I invite our Managing Committee Member and Honorary Local Secretary of Mumbai Sector, Mr. Keetan Jani, to welcome Mrs. Gudreja on behalf of the Himalayan Club and felicitate her. <laughs> Request Mrs. Gudreja to read the citation. Thank you, dear. Hello, dear. Dear Keku who was really a stalwart of this club. He was born more than a century ago in 1915 and was one of the pillars, if I could say, of the Himalayan club and its president from 1986 to 1992. He really was a man of the mountains. There's no doubt about it. Pipe in one hand, camera in one hand, and I can imagine him as a young man going off into a field which uh, wasn't very common and wasn't and was full of hardships uh, for a person of his background. But he took on the gauntlet. One time he spent length of time in central Harvard and in his personal diary of his trip, as well as the account of his other major trips to the Himalayas in 1958 and Sikkim, formed the subject of matter of a book. And I remember after he passed away, unfortunately his son should have been here today, but he cannot join us, Rishad Naruji, who you all know, many of you know, found this entire group of black and white photographs, his diaries, meticulously maintained diaries, his cameras that he had used in those days, and with the help of Jagdish Nanavati and Harish Kapitya and the younger lot of Vivesh and Vinita, we all were terribly inspired with what Keku had done. He was a very quiet man. He was really a man of the mountains. He hardly spoke. But uh, we found these and we felt that we needed to preserve this in some way. We have our portrait archives. We want to do a little bit more. And it was on the initiation of the Himalayan Club that we brought out this wonderful book called Himalayan Vineyards. And he took his responsibilities of helping to strengthen and consolidate the club activities. So this was one of the things that we took up is to bring out this book, which is a serious book. It's all black and white photography and under very, very uh, difficult and uh, constrained circumstances. And actually, Kevin's business experience, I think, helped uh, in the progress of the Himalayan club, and I'm sure that he must have been giving very sound advice to the committee members, especially when they had their committee meetings and discussing things. And his business experience brought a good sense to the committee dealings. He passed away in 2003, and in 2005, the club, in association with the Naroji family and the Goldridge Group, set up a book award for the best literature on the Himalaya, published during that year. Of course, it's sometimes very difficult to get the same year, same book. Publishers are involved. We cannot work. We work through the publishers. The club works through the publishers. Correct me if I'm wrong. And this book award instituted in his name is for a book, as I said, published during that year. It's a prescribed format. The writer he or she uh, follows the criteria laid down and it over the years it's different aspects of the Himalayas, not just climbing, 
and uh, mountaineering expeditions. He talks about the mountains, mountaineering people, the culture, environment, politics, and other related topics. So without much ado, I'm going to just announce the winner. Unfortunately, he's not here today, but I will now read out the citation for this year's award. The 15th Gekunaraji Book Award for Himalayan Literature, appreciating Yakoslav, Yaroslav, Ponka, recipient of the 15th Gekunaraji Book Award for Himalayan Literature, for his book, The Siachen Expedition, which he did in 1978, and for a variety of reasons, he self-published it in 2021. This award is being presented to him by the club and the family as the Kekunaroji Book Award in its 15th year on Saturday, 16th April 2022. I really wish he was here, but we all acknowledge the hard work he's put in and we wish him well in the part of the world that he resides and may he go on and continue to do more publications, more, exhibit, more, more expeditions first, and then publications, hopefully. So, Yaroslav, I wish you were here with us, but we send you our greetings, our very best wishes, and our congratulations. Thank you very much. So much. A round of applause, please. Thank you, Mrs. Greenwich, for giving the honors. The two members for this award include Stephen Goodwin, Rama Goel, and Nandini Purandari. I love I'd now love to invite Nandini to read the jury statement on behalf of the jury. And then you please welcome me on the stage. Thank you, Dr. Bisht, for that fantastic presentation. I just wanted to say that I realized that it probably takes 30 days to climb a mountain, but 30 years to grow a tree. So, list of some of the things that mountaineering includes. Uh, but I wanted to add writers. Writers of books and uh, I'm here today for that. I'm here to uh, read out a statement on behalf of the uh, jury for the book award. Um, the 2021 Keku Navroji Award invited several entries and very diverse ones at that. From a biography of a mountain, which was Kanchan Jonga by Doug Scott, to Structured Chaos, which is about a mountaineer's life, to a couple of books on Everest, uh, shedding as always some new light on an, uh, to an uplifting book featuring human triumph over di disability. These books are recommended reading. The jury this time, and not without intense discussion, selected a self-published book, Siachen Expedition 1978 by Jaroslav Ponkar as the winner. It was not an easy or unanimous choice. That fact itself makes it very interesting. This, the Siachen War is a territorial dispute which turned into a military conflict between India and Pakistan in 1984 after which a ceasefire was declared in 2003. The area of contention stretches over 2,600 square kilometers. According to Jaroslav, it began in 1978 when the German conduced Siachen expedition under his leadership along with members Volker Stahlholm, Wolfgang Kohl and liaison officer Major Asad Raza entered Siachen via the Billafon La and established the base camp on the confluence of Siachen and Terangshir. 
They also made a documentary film for German TV called the Expedition to the Longest Glacier. Following this, in the summer of 1981, Colonel Bulkumar, Narendra Bulkumar, then head of the High Altitude Warfare School, organized a 54-man army expedition to the Siachen, which also climbed some 7,000 meters at the Siachen and skied down from Indira Kohl. He was marking territory. Whether Jaro's point of view is accurate is hardly the point here. Of importance is this historic document presented with searing honesty in an unbiased manner with several maps and correspondence. To quote one jury member who summed it up well, if I had to choose one book of the eight I'd like to keep on my bookshelf, it would be Siachen Expedition 1978. I appreciate this might not be a popular choice in India, given the harsh words about a revered hero of Indian mountaineering, mountaineering Gul Kumar. Nonetheless, the book is an important historical record with first-hand accounts from Walter Sarbom of how the infamous U.S. Army service map of the Siachen came into the hands of Indian Army officers. The text is relatively brief and the English somewhat stilted, but in that, to me at least, rather endearing way that Germans speak English, direct, matter of fact and frank. Though the expedition took place more than 40 years ago, the text has a remarkable freshness. Extraordinary that it has taken so long for the state to emerge. Significant though the text is, the photographs alone would uh, make this an award winner in any competition for mountain images. Some of them have a misty, dreamlike quality and of course, they too, like the text, are an important addition to the historical record. Another member wrote, it is the story of a landmark expedition that contributed to the start of a conflict that rages on even today. Superb photos, maps and illustrations make it a must-have for Indian Himalayan lovers and those wanting peace in that region. Some might say that it has been a bit late in coming. Others might find Pontar's references to an Indian army officer a bit offensive, but these are hiccups that can be explained. Yes, the book is a valuable nugget in the history of a long-drawn war. Moreover, its photographs call out to you as Asking you to turn the pages, it is, is the fight worth it? Uh, or must nature in its beauty and might be left well alone for nobody or at the very most for those with a light footprint? This is on behalf of Stephen Goodman, Chairperson, Rama Goel and myself. And we have a special mentioned book here. The jury would like to give Doug Scott's last book, Kanjan Zoka, a special mention. Again to quote jury members. Contrary to my expect, uh, expectations, the book is more than just about climbing on Kanjan Jumla. Doug Scott takes us back deep into the history of exploration on this mountain and people associated with it. There are many books on the history of exploration and climbing on Everest, so the fact that this book concentrates on Kanjan Jumla is refreshing. It is truly the biography of a mountain and all that it has witnessed since it came into being. It helps that it is Kanchen Joga, that it is so beautiful and so dangerous. Doug Scott, in his final farewell, wrote this fabulous quote to the mountain he so loved and was the scene of perhaps his most outstanding climb. Dear friends of Himalaya, just a few days ago I received an email informing me that I have been given by Himalayan Club the Keiko Naoroji Book Award for 2021. For this book, The Siachen Expedition 1978, I am the author, the photographer, and also the publisher of this book. Why is this book coming so late? It's more than 40 years ago that I led an expedition to Siachen, which 
was at that time belonging to no, nobody, only to the adventurers that entered it. Our expedition was the third visit from the west to this glacier area and um, we entered from Pakistan. Why that late this report? In 2021, National Geographic reported on the war that was on about Siachen, on Siachen and surrounding glaciers since 1984 and uh, si still it is not uh, without army presence. The cease fire was agreed between Pakistan and India in 2003 but it's far from uh, peace uh, that uh, we could talk about on Siachen. <clears throat> in, in 1988 the war was already four years old. I have uh, been told by my friend who was then an Indian Army General and was with them me in the boating expedition on the Indus in 1975 that his son who was then a lieutenant in Indian Army was posted to Siachen fell into a crevice but luckily unharmed was rescued. So then I uh, decided to do something and uh, wrote a letter to both uh, Rajiv Gandhi, whom I met a few years ago uh, in presence of his mother, uh, and to Zia Ulhaq, the president of Pakistan, and in, including a video cassette with the our film on the expedition, I propose to make Siachen an international sporting area. Uh, the re reaction uh, was not positive from both sides. The Zia Ulhaq unfortunately uh, air crashed and uh, died in 1988. So in a way, I forgot about Siachen and uh, did not undertake anything more. My photographs from the expedition 1978 um, were some, I thought to submit it to National Geographic and um, so I took my best pictures and mailed them to Washington DC, but unfortunately it went lost. So my first choice of photographs uh, were not to my disposition. So uh, in following years, uh, I only got in touch with uh, two Swiss filmmakers who made a documentary on the 20th anniversary of Siachen War. The film was called, I think, uh, uh, Siachen, A War for Eyes. And so, uh, and they interviewed me here in Cologne, where I am now, also talking to you. Uh, and uh, so far, nothing happened. I have, 
after the article in uh, National Geographic was published, where uh, our expedition is not correctly mentioned, uh, I decided before my memory has eradicated all details about the expedition, I decided to write it down to make a book and nowadays thanks to the digital technology it is possible uh, to make high quality printing uh, for reasonable cost so I published this book Siachen Expedition 1978. Again, I must say that I'm very much honored to have, to have been awarded the very prestigious prize by the Himalayan Club of India. And I regret very much that due to COVID, I will not be able to be personally present with the handover ceremony of this ever. <clears throat> I wish you all the best, stay healthy and, and enjoy Himalayas whenever you can.